Welcome to another edition of Wings Weekly. Once again, Jay Klein Connect here and head coach Scott Langer. Coach, uh, one game o- over the weekend here at the ODI Center and a packed house. I mean, that crowd was fantastic. I think, yeah, I think the attendance that was reported was 1808 or something like that. But uh, a lot of bodies in the seats, and you guys were uh, able to put up a win, a 4-2 win. Power play goes 100%, 1-1. Penalty kill was uh, 100% as they killed off uh, three three uh, power play opportunities that Bismarck had. Backle had about 10 seconds of a, the all Backle show where he puts on a big hit and then ends up scoring. And following that, Landon Parker with a really good, uh, uh, a great shot, but a great feed from behind the net from Tishkovich. And then Owen Dubois with uh, a... a game winner where he just absolutely fought through and steals the puck in the neutral zone and fought. Honestly, I, I did not think he was going to get the shot off. He had a guy on each hip, sticks over his sticks. I was looking for a backdoor pass as uh, Gullitson was trailing, just a, but somehow he gets a backhanded shot off and, and uh, puts you guys up at that point, 3-2, and then the empty netter at the end, 4-2. But, uh, you know, Moore had a bunch of big saves. Uh, O'Connell with three assists, the couple that were added after the fact, uh, when, when this, things got corrected and so on, but still, just a, a big game uh, from a lot of people and a, a big effort. And you know, you and I talked about um, the fear of a slow start after coming back from a break. That really wasn't the case. You have to feel pretty good about the way things went. Yeah, I think that was a big part of our success is having that start. Because um, once Bismarck got going, it, uh, they were going at a pretty good rate. But uh, you know, we, we knew that there could be some ups and downs in the course of that game with not playing, you know, a game in two weeks and. Sometimes that's different. That's it's just hard to get your wheels going. And um, the, the nice thing about the whole thing is that our guys, you know, once they tied it up, and our guys just kept fighting, you know. And mm-hmm. then obviously we had to kill a, a huge penalty, and we we got a shorthanded goal off it, which really motivates your hockey team. So uh, from that point on, I thought we were playing really good hockey. Yeah, like I said, a lot to, a lot to be happy with. Some, you know, the physicality was there, the energy was there. You had, uh, you know. Great, a great puck movement. You just a, a lot of great things that you can take away from that. How do you build off of that? As you know, you look at the game. You look at the weekend with one one game as we talked about. You know, a, a kind of a different scenario there in its own right. But now you move on and, and prepare for for Bismarck, who you're going to see again, and we'll get to that in just a moment. But but you've got four straight now. You know, things seem to be rolling in the right direction. Like, like we talked about, the kill is trending in the right direction, as you said. And uh, had a, a strong night there Saturday. Power play again. A str- like a lot of things are, are moving the right way. How do you keep the, that momentum going? Well, you just got to keep doing things the right way. You can't stray from what makes you successful. Um, at this level, it's it's really easy to get sidetracked. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's the staff's the staff's responsibility to make sure that doesn't happen within your group. I mean, you have a lot of moving pieces with with 24 players, and um, but. You know, our guys are excited that they are taking points, and you can tell by the way they're playing, they're excited to play those games. And uh, I don't think we need any motivation to play Bismarck after this this game here. You know, you you will look at them on uh, most of their box scores. There's there's no penalties in their box scores yet. When they play us, it's it's full. You know, so. Um, we know they're up for the challenge, and, and they're going to be hard at home. They're really good at home, and we're going to have to. We're, our motivation is going to have to be be good, and we're going to have to try to take points. Absolutely. Well, you know, I, I read a, an article where you know you talked about Cole Moore and the amount of minutes that he's been playing in games. He's been playing, you know, and he he's come up with some really really big saves in key moments. And I, you know, I feel like I'm, every week I'm saying that. You know, like it just it seems to be such a common thread. Um, you know, and, and of course, with the injury to Picora, not a lot of choice there, really. But uh, how how soon can we expect to see Gino back? You know, Gino's fully back now. You'll see him this weekend. Okay, you know, he'll be he'll be either backing up or or in the net. We'll see how his week of practice goes. But he's been working really hard to get back. He's putting a lot of time in for the last few weeks to get back and in, into where Gino was when he left us. So um, that's going to be really nice for Cole. Yeah, um, because he, I think if Cole didn't have to play so many games back to back and and he wasn't as tired as he was, his numbers would be through the roof right now. And he's got good numbers. I mean, yeah. he's given us a chance to win every single game he's played. So uh, I just think that he deserves a little bit of time to heal up as well. And he hasn't had that luxury at all. Right. Right. Well, you know, last week, too, we talked about uh, the addition of Justice and, and Benoit and, and Gravink. 
Um, you know, and they obviously saw you know quality minutes here this weekend and, and a big uh, contribution. Um, you know, to to that win. What what other are there? You know, how do I put that? Is there a point when you know your your roster is basically set and you're not looking at making any more moves? And and also, I know there's dates coming up. What you know, if you know fans are watching or whatever, what what uh, what can they expect? Or you know, as as fans, uh, do you see any other movements or additions? Well, I mean, that's that's on the players. You know, yeah. if the players are getting the job done, uh, there's no no reason to make any changes. If if the if the ball club's winning, there's no reason to make changes. So, you know, we don't make changes for the sake of making changes. Right. Like, there's some guys that just need to be moved, and and that's for their own benefit to to get their career back in order. Because sometimes you just need a new change of scenery. But you know, February second's the day that our our protected lists are going to change or or be be solid. Uh, I don't like to make a whole lot of changes this year. I've had to make a lot of changes and you know we're putting things into place uh, that's going to help that uh, throughout the summer and build for building next year's group that you know hopefully we don't have to make this many changes and the other thing is is that you can't plan on such long-term injuries that we've gotten that's true I, I haven't had that happen in a real long time so those guys need to have their roles filled and in order to do that you got to go bring guys in yeah so but you know we like our group we think we have a pretty decent group here, and uh, we might need one or two more parts um, just to kind of put us in a position to to be really good down the stretch. But you know, like I said, I don't like to make changes. Yeah. Well, and I think ever since you've you know come to Aberdeen, the family uh, atmosphere that is in this locker room that's part of that. You know what I mean? Like if you, it's hard to keep a family or feel like a family uh, mentality when there are a lot. So I, 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 I understand and I know that you're not, not a huge fan of that. Uh, Austin right now at the top of the division with 34 points. Minot in second with 28. Wings in third with 25. North Iowa with 25 points, but they've got three more games played, so the win percentage uh, tiebreaker goes to the wings, wings there. Bismarck with 21 points, then St. Cloud with 18. We talked about it. You've got two more with Bismarck. Uh, you know, and you mentioned you know they're going to be up and ready, and your team doesn't need much to you know to be um, excited for that or to to emotionally get ready to play Bismarck. Do you expect to see any changes? What do you expect from uh, from the Bobcats? And we know they've got a strong power play. You know you, you've seen these guys, especially obviously on the ice, but you know plenty of film on them too. Yeah, they come hard. You know they're they're a hard forechecking group. They 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 go hard in all three zones, and they don't let you breathe. They don't let you take a sh shift off. And um, we've got to play wings hockey, and we got to be really good. We got to manage the puck against them because they're really good off the line rush. All right, folks. So uh, again, wings on the road this weekend, taking on Bismarck Bobcats. Uh, for another two games, we talk to, uh, we'll talk with a player here about the perspective from a player and playing the same team. It's always interesting for sure. But, Coach, that's all I've got for you. Thanks so much for your time, and congratulations on a big win, and good luck against the Bobcats this Thanks, weekend. Jay. All right, folks, we'll be back with the second portion coming up after this. We raise the bar on bar food with sandwiches, tenders, and... Burgers. There's more where this came from. <laughs> to the greatest of all times. Wings Weekly continues on, and as usual, a player is joining me. This time it is Ronan Walsh of Andover, New Hampshire. Five goals, six assists on the season here so far, and you've been a big part uh, of this team in, on, in, well, many levels and many components, whether it's physicality, whether it's scoring, whether it's power play, whether it's whatever. Um, things feel like they're, they're really kind of moving in the right direction here. As I was just talking with Coach Langer about, you know, you've got four games uh, now, four wins straight, and... Uh, I was curious how the players, you know, coming out of the weekend and the week off and then having one game on the week uh, on that Saturday, was it difficult to get back to the locker room and get back to, you know, back into hockey mode? I mean, it, it's gonna, we're going to have a little rust. I mean, it's, that's unavoidable, but I think that we've been here for this long and it, it wasn't that hard to come back and kind of get back into a rhythm. Um, definitely some things that... Uh, didn't go great in the game. Uh, probably wasn't our best game, but we, we got the win, worked hard. It was a battle. I mean, that's yeah. how we play. Yeah. It, it's a hard game, and, and we wanted it more, and we got the win in the end. So. Well, yeah, and I was curious, you know, just, just how that was going to go because Coach, you know, even talked about the fact that, that it was a thing, you know, that you were, they were concerned about a slow start. Wasn't there. It wasn't a slow yeah. start, so that was, uh, that was great. Did you personally get a chance to go home over that break? I know that's kind of difficult for somebody like you as far as they, you would have to travel. Yeah, no, I, I didn't get a chance to. Um, it would have been, would have been a tight, 
uh, yeah. trip, go home for a couple of days, and then get on a plane and fly right back out. So yeah. I stayed in town and uh, yeah, just just rest it up, and get ready for the for the week. Right on. Okay. Well. Um, a recent, well, somewhat recent, UNH uh, commit. Congratulations on that. Tell us a little about that. What all went into it, and what you know into your decision process, or into you know in, into to deciding that that's where you wanted to play. Yeah, I mean, UNH has been a, a school on my radar my whole my whole process. Yeah. Uh, starting in high school, uh, I'm from New Hampshire, obviously, so that's kind of a lot of kids' dreams is to go play for them and and stay kind of close to home. It's like 40 minutes from my parents so they can come by mm -hmm. school anytime and, and see all my games. And so I think that for me was a no brainer. It's D1 hockey, hockey East, right near my house in my home state. I, I think that there's no question on that one. Yeah, yeah. when you put it that way, it does kind of lay itself out like, well, that's a, like you said, kind of a no brainer. Yeah. You know, and, and I, we've talked before, you know, we've ha had you on Wings Weekly before and stuff, but just to, to kind of rehash, how did you get started? I know you've got a, a brother that's been a big influence and, and, and your parents and so on. Tell us a little bit about how you got started playing the game. Yeah, I've been playing for as long as I can remember. Um, my dad has been a coach for 30 years, at least now, I, I'm not even sure the number. Um, he's been my coach my whole life, uh, had me skating before I can even remember. Um, I was on the ice before I could even walk and pulled on a sled. So, um, yeah, we've been playing hockey. Me and my brother have been playing hockey uh, our whole lives. We'd just go out and skate, uh, just play pickup, and, and yeah, just took off from there. Destined to be. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, hmm, how do I put this? Playing with passion. You know, you're a, you're a guy that uh, you know. He, he, it's funny because you know you talk to guys around the locker room and stuff. They 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 often will say that you know, great singer. He's a funny guy. He's this and that. And you're like, you're talking about the same guy that <laughs> that I'm watching on the ice because he's kind of mean. You know, like you play with passion and, and, and a lot of uh, you know, well, tenacity and all of the you know, great. I can give you all kinds of great attributes. But you're a guy that's going to be in the middle of stuff oftentimes. Um, is it hard to find that balance where, you know what I mean, where, where you're like, okay, I'm going to be gritty, but I can't go too far with this. I don't want to spend yeah. a whole lot of time in the penalty box, even though I'm pretty sure the locker room voted you to be the <laughs> one person that's going to spend the most time there. But is it difficult to find that, find that balance? Yeah, I think that's probably the, the hardest part about my game is finding that balance. It's been something I've been working on for years now. Um, you know, picking when I want to hit someone or, or when's a good time to reload and get up tracking back on defense um, and, and finding that the exact balance is hard. Mm -hmm. it, it is because I want to be in the mix of everything, but I want to stay out of the box. Um, but I mean, I just got to send the message that like I got my, my teammates back no mm -hmm. matter what and you guys aren't going to get away with anything. So, yeah, that's interesting. I mean, because especially at home. From where I stand in the, you know, during the games, I can hear some of that that goes on on the mm -hmm. ice. And uh, you've been fairly vocal with uh, officials at times too. Is that, does that ever get to be a challenge where you got to remind yourself, okay, don't go too far with this? You yeah, know? of course. I mean, I, I try to do my best to not talk to them at all. But I mean, sometimes it's just you got to say something. Like, but I, I try my best not to. Um, it's it's a part of the game. I'm trying to move away from. Uh, as I as I grow older and and develop my my play style, and that's definitely something that I gotta try to leave behind yeah. going forward. Do you think it's maturity? What would you what would you say it is that that, that uh, you know as you, like you said as you grow older yeah. and get you know get more more time more experience, you know it, it, is that what you? Yeah, you, definitely. Just try to try to play a more pro style of hockey, you know, pros, you watch that NHL, they're not doing that kind of stuff. Unless you're Marchand, but. Yeah, <laughs> unless you can get get away with it, right? But um, no, I think it's something that uh, I've been working on as well. Um, just kind of focusing on what I can control and, and the stuff that I can't control, I try to try to let that play out and just worry about me and, and our team and, and doing what we can do to win. Right, right, okay. Um, you know, I talked with Coach, a great crowd. 
uh, on Saturday night here. You know, and I think the fans took advantage of it. And, 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 you know, after a weekend off and only one game this last weekend, I think there were a lot of people that were like, you know, we kind of miss it. Like, yeah. it's not an every weekend kind of opportunity. And they they packed the place. It was great to see, you know, some 1,800 and change. Okay. What was that like for you guys? Uh, I know you guys often talk about how, what, you know, what great fans we have and stuff. But that had to be even a little bit more of a motivator to see that those, those bodies, all those people up there. Yeah, for sure. I mean, after warm-ups, we, kinda, we do our entrance at the tunnel and guys are looking ready for the anthem and are like, whoa, there's a lot of people here. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's definitely a, a little jump start for us. That, that definitely helped, I think, our first period. Guys woke up and realized, hey, there's people here watching us. We got to put on a show and we got to win this game. Yeah. It's funny because, you know, a lot of times during warm-ups, I'll look at, look at the crowd and go, hmm, seems a little light. And then when the lights come back yeah. up yeah. after the anthem and stuff, I'm like, where did they all come from? Yeah. Or, you know. So, uh, yeah, great to see, and, and a big thanks to all those that came out and supported, because, uh, yeah, great game, great hockey game. I was getting messages even during it, going, what a game this is. I'm like, I'm kind of working here, maybe not messaging me now, but anyway. Uh, I got to ask you, you know, something that I, I like to ask players about their foods, and, and you know, you being a, an East Coast guy, maybe it's a little different than what it would be for somebody from around here or whatever. Say if you have a final meal, what is that going to look, what's that plate going to look like? Uh, I'm probably getting steak and mashed potatoes. Okay, so not that much different. No, <laughs> no. I mean, yeah, definitely like a nice a medium rare filet and, and just good mashed potatoes, maybe some broccoli or something. And yeah, that, that's, that's about it. Yeah. Pretty simple, but can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. Well, you, you, <laughs> you can, can if you overcook it or yeah. whatever. But, but that's interesting because I, I kind of thought maybe, uh, you know, like, like Carl's from, you know, the, some of the guys talk about seafood and yeah. stuff like that and being a New Hampshire guy, I thought maybe that'd be it. But just uh, a, a good, uh, good piece of steak and some potatoes. There you go. Um, how about, you know, we're, it's hard to believe, but Thanksgiving is behind us. We're looking you know, towards a, a Christmas here. What's your favorite holiday? Um, and then I got a follow-up question for that too. But what what would you say is is the holiday you look forward to the most? I mean, you can't go wrong with Christmas. I, I feel like everyone says it, but it's it truly is one of the best times of the year. But I mean, I I like the summer. Fourth uh, of July, I think is is one of the best holidays. Everyone gets together and and just has a good time and, and celebrates the country that we live in, and it's it's great. Yeah, for sure. Okay, you're right though. Can't go wrong with Christmas. Christmas in, in next, I mean, just like that, we've got 24 hours of the Elf, 24 hours of, of Christmas Story, <laughs> yeah. you know, all these different shows that are out there. And of course there's the classics, uh, you know, like Christmas Carol and all those kinds of things. What would you say, what's your favorite Christmas movie? Uh, I got The Grinch. Oh, that's my favorite. Yes. It's just, it's always a classic. Watch it every year and it never gets old. I saw a thing the other day with that Jim Carrey had to go through eight hours each day, eight hours of makeup wow. to, to be the Grinch for that. That's crazy. That was before even ever filming anything. That was just yeah, makeup. That's crazy. That, that, that was kind of nuts too. All right. Well, talking with Coach just a bit ago, you know, uh, you've got Bismarck again. Two games in their barn this time, you know. And, uh, you know, I always talk with players about playing teams when you have them back to back to back to back or whatever that, you know, the, the memories are short and the tempers are even shorter oftentimes or whatever. What do you think that you guys has, as a group have to do? You know, what are some keys? But then also well, from an emotional standpoint, uh, you know, you, you got to kind of keep yourself reined in a little bit there too, don't you? Yeah, I mean, we just got to keep playing our game and just, just outwork them. I think we, we have enough skill in the room that we just got to put the work in and, and the rest will take care of itself. And we know how they play. We know they like to score off the rush. We just got to, our track has to be good. Our, def our D zone has got to be better. Um, winning more battles and, and making less mistakes with pucks, and I think we'll be all right. Excellent. All right. Well, Ronan, that's about all I've got for you. I appreciate you coming on the show, though. As always, you know, each time we get a chance to talk with you guys, it's always nice for the fans to be able to, to kind of get, uh, get to know you on a personal level a little bit. And always nice to hear, you know, your perspective, too, about the games and the crowds and how things went, too. So, again, yeah. thanks so much. Yeah, no problem. The Wings hit the road for a weekend series against the Bismarck Bobcats, as we just talked about. A puck drops inside the VFW Sports Center in Bismarck at 7.15, both Friday and Saturday night. Catch the action using your hockey TV login or watch the games at Buffalo Wings. Wings and Rings in Aberdeen, the official home for all Wings away games. The game's audio will be broadcast via Hub City Radio's 94.1 The Rock, or you can download The Rock app and listen anywhere from your mobile device. We'll be back at the OD on Friday and Saturday, December 9th and 10th, to host the Austin Bruins. Stay tuned to AberdeenWings.com for more details. 
Very few corporate night sponsor sponsorships are still available for the 22-23 season. Call Aaron at 605-380-5852 to see what's left. Your skater can still sign up for Wings Clinics with assistant coach Zach Stepan. Visit AberdeenWings.com and click the Aberdeen Wings Youth Clinics tab for details and dates. Don't forget, you can listen to Wings Weekly via our podcast. Find the audio for this season's episodes on Spotify, Stitcher, or iHeartRadio. And for the latest news and information on the Wings, visit AberdeenWings.com or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and on TikTok. Once again, Ronan Walsh, uh, again, five goals, six assists, and rolling along here this season. Thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. All right, folks, that'll wrap up this week's Wings Weekly. 